David Smith here with one more flip classroom math video. Three tips before we start. First, remember you can speed up the playback if that helps you get through the video faster. Just make sure you understand and keep up with your notes. Second, you can pause the video at any time to catch up with your notes or think about the topics. Lastly, you can turn on the captions and watch my words go by on the bottom of your screen. Today's lesson covers how to draw a best fit line with a scatter plot of data. So when we have correlation, when we have trends in our data, it's often useful to draw a line that would express that correlation. And in fact, we can write equations of those lines. So you can see I've got a scatter plot. This is real data or could be real data. I just made it up, but it could be real data. Or just a simple time versus speed graph perhaps for an accelerating object. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to draw a best fit line for there. Now you could just take your pen and go, yeah, like that. But we have a little bit more of a scientific method for doing that. So there's three steps, check this out. First off, start with a scatter plot, Shazam, you got that. Two, find the mean point. So in this case, I'm just gonna assume a certain point is the mean point, but I'm gonna show you how to calculate that in a minute. But here we go. So let's just assume that that is the mean point. Third, draw a straight line through the mean point and as close as possible to all the other data points. Okay? So you, the way to do that is to draw your straight line so that an equal amount of these scatter plot points are above and are below that line. So let's see how good I do. Now you be the judge. I think that's pretty good. It looks like roughly half the data is above that line and half the data is below that line. Plus you can see I'm going right through. There's three of them and I'm pretty close to two, three, four, five more. So that seems like that's a pretty good fit. So this would be a best fit line for this data. Now let's get into the details and do it more mathematically. All right, here is a possible scenario where we have time spent studying in hours graphed against or put against the test score. So we have these various test scores and the hours spent studying. And if you snoop on this data, you're, you're going to notice it's not a perfect correlation um, in that this person studied six hours, got a 78. This one studied two hours left, got two, two hours less, but got 2% more. This person studied seven hours, and only got 6% more than that person, and so on. So you can see that this data is not gonna make a perfect line. Okay, so step one in drawing a best fit line for this data is to make the scatter plot. So I want you to pause the video and go ahead and make a scatter plot in your notes. Okay, here's my scatter plot. And notice how since our lowest test score is 66, I started my scale at 60 with the scale break symbol right in there. So that's a good trick to do that. And I just scaled it up by 10% each time. And then I really only needed all the way up to eight hours. So I scaled my x-axis just starting at eight or ending at eight. And then I plotted all my points on there. And you can see that's definitely a scatter plot. So step two is finding the mean point. And I'm going to explain how to do that, and then I want you to do that calculation. The mean point is just the mean of the x values and the mean of the y values. So we have a notation for that, and that's the mean point is written x bar over y bar. And so remember, x bar is the average of x, y bar would be the average of y. So go ahead and pause the video and figure out the mean or the average of the x values and the mean or the average of the y values. So what I did is I just pulled out my calculator and did my calc um, on my x bar and I got 4.7 for the average of the time spent. So the average time spent studying was 4.7 hours and then the average test score was 81.4. So the mean point is this, 4.7, 81.4. So we're gonna graph that. So 4.7, right about there, and then 81.4, that's right about there. Now, this is not a data point, okay? It's a mean point. So we're gonna designate that with an M, just so that we know that's not actually a data point. 
Now, the next step, and I want you to try this, is to draw a straight line that goes through the mean point that has an equal amount of data points above that straight line as below the straight line. So pause the video and do that. If you want to use a ruler, that's a good trick. Here's what I got. Here's my red line. I used red just to distinguish. You could use black, it's fine. Um, and you'll notice that this line should really kind of split the data on both sides. Now there's a caveat here. The distance from the line matters, okay? So let's take a closer look. You can see that these points are below the line and they're quite a bit further away from the line than the points on the top. And you'll notice that there's really only three points that are below and we've got one, two, three, four, five that are above, but the above lines are, uh, points are quite a bit closer than the ones that are below. So I've kind of split the difference between the data points. I'm about halfway between all of it. Plus the other thing is that the way the data is situated, if I tilt this line, it's gonna be hard to go through this point and get exactly the same number of points above and below. And then when we do a regression analysis to come up with the equation of the line, the way it does that is it looks at the distances from the point to the line and it compares those mathematically to come up with an equation for a best fit line. But that's later, that's the next lesson. So there's a best fit line. Now, what we can do is we can create the equation for this best fit line. Everything you need to do that is prior knowledge. So if you're feeling bold, what I would say is pause the video right now and use your graph or use this one on there if your graph was a little bit wonky, but use this graph to come up with an equation for that line. And what we're looking for is gradient intercept or slope intercept form. Let's see how you did. So I've squeezed this all the way over here on, the, uh, on your right side of the board. Um, so the first step is to find the slope. And this one's nice because we have two points that are right on this line. So all you need is two points to find the slope. Here's our slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You just plug your points in to the slope formula, crunch your numbers, and this gives us a slope of 4.73. So this line has that slope or that gradient. Now, we need to find the intercept. It's, we don't quite have an equation until we have that y-intercept. So the way we do that is we just plug in the y value, and that's going to always be the x value times the slope plus the intercept. So I've just done a plug-in step for my slope-intercept form, and I am using the mean point to do that. I think you could also use this point to do that, and you get the same result. So I've crunched my numbers, and I've isolated B is 59.2. And so now I can just simply write my equation, which is 4.73x plus 59.2, and that, of course, is y equals that. So now what we've got is we've got a nice scatter plot with a best fit line imposed over that, and we now have an equation that describes that line. Now that equation can be used to estimate the score if you know the hours. So if your pal comes up to you and says, hey, I studied for five and a half hours for that test, you can use that equation to estimate what their score would be. We're gonna use our example here in our equation to make some predictions. But before we do that, we need to talk about the requirements necessary to actually do that task. So the first one, you gotta have a strong correlation. If your R value doesn't indicate a strong correlation, then you can't make predictions. Or if you do, they're not gonna be so good. Second thing, you're predicting a Y value given an X value. So you use the X to predict the Y, or you use the independent variable to predict the dependent variable. So that's the second condition. Third condition is the prediction is interpolation, not extrapolation. Now interpolation means you're predicting within your data set. So within the data set from the scatter plot. Extrapolation means you might be predicting what a score would be, say someone studied for 20 hours. Well, we don't have 20 hours on our graph, so we can't use the graph to predict 20 hours. So the same thing with any scatter plot, extrapolation is a no-no. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. But this first one, strong correlation. You already know how to calculate your R value. So go ahead and calculate the R value based on this data. Use your calculator, go through the steps, and then come back. 
So when I use my calculator, what I get for my R value is 0.878. So yes, we do have a strong correlation. So now we're free to make predictions. All right, let's make a first prediction. So here we go. If a person earned 90% on the test or 90 marks on the test, how many hours did they study? So I want you to pause the video and use your equation there and predict how many hours they study and then come back. All right, if you caught that you can't do this one, you're right good on you. We can't do it because this is asking us to predict the X value given the Y value. And you'll remember that was one of the conditions. You have to go from X to Y, from the independent to the dependent variable. So this is not a prediction that we make in this situation. All right, here's another prediction for you to make. Predict the score if they studied for 10 hours. So we are doing the right thing. We're using the X value to predict the Y value. So go ahead and use this information and your equation and predict their score. Okay, let's see how you did. So this is straightforward. I just took my 10 hours. I plugged it into my equation, did my math, and I got 106.5%. So what do you think? Pause the video and think about that result for a minute. Okay, if you were saying, whoa, wait a minute, you're right. This is extrapolation. If you remember, our data set only went to eight hours, but we're going to 10 hours. And so 10 hours is not going to work. And it also shows up here. You can't get 106%, assuming no extra credit and all that kind of stuff. So we've actually gone above a reasonable result. And the truth is, there's going to be a point of diminishing returns. As you study more and more and more, you're not going to keep increasing your score by the same amount. So ultimately, this would not be a straight line graph. But for our data, we made a straight line graph and used this equation. And it's good as long as we're within the data set. So this is extrapolation and it's not allowed. Okay, let's try this one. Predict the score if they studied for 5.5 hours. Now let's look at our conditions before we do this. Is the correlation strong? Yes, our R value is 0.878. Is this predicting Y given the X? Yes, the X is hours, the Y is the score. Check, is this interpolation? Is this value within our data set? Yes, check. So now we can actually do this prediction. So go ahead and pause the video and predict the score for 5.5 hours of study time. Here you go, straightforward plug-in step. Five hours goes in there for X in our equation. Crunch the numbers, I get 85.2%. So there is our prediction. Now that you've watched the video, take a moment to write down any questions so you can bring them to our next class. Always remember, you can watch the video again to deepen your understanding. If you enjoyed the video, please click like and subscribe.